And welcome back. June 6 was the 80th anniversary of the Normandy invasion, which has been called the longest day in our nation's history. While the importance of the Allied invasion into German-occupied France can't, cannot be denied, we should also remember that, uh, that on June 6 is the longest day for other reasons. World War II was not about the, just about the European theater of action. America was involved in a world war, fighting many foes and military actions that took place all across the globe. In the Pacific, the United States forces began to, the campaign to take back the Marianas Island chain with the invasion of Saipan. That resulted in nearly six months of brutal battle and deadly combat on the seas and on the land. In Europe, that campaign, the campaign to liberate Italy and drive out German troops culminated on June 6th with the capture of Rome. I think the importance of this day in history is not marked just by the heroic actions that took place that day on the Normandy beaches, and there were many, for there have been many heroic battles throughout, the, throughout world history. To me, the ultimate importance of D-Day and what it symbolizes is it led to the defeat of an evil tyrannical rogue nation and the transformation of enemies into allies. What do you think is most important about remembering June 6th, Mark? Well, I, I think it's just a reminder when we think about what happened in World War II is that our, our liberty, our freedom is always under challenge and it comes from unexpected quarters. Uh, only a few years before uh, 1944 was a strong sentiment for isolationism in this country. And then we were obviously faced with the challenge of the Nazis and, and, and uh, um, the empire of Japan. Um, the need for vigilance, the need for preparation, the need to be able to push back when uh, faced with challenges is a reminder that that's a necessary precondition for our maintaining our freedoms to cherish them. Well, thank you. Kerry, your, your th thoughts. You know, this brings me back to when my mother was a young lady. Um, May 18th, exactly, 1944. Uh, that was her birthday. Uh, she lived in a small farm on a mountain uh, just outside of Rome, about, about 30 minutes outside of Rome. But the, 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 the story is not about my mother, but about Monte Cassino. That's another mountain, three or four mountains away from my mom. Uh, and one of the biggest battles to take over Italy occurred there. It was a four month battle where the allied forces fought relentlessly to uh, defeat the Germans. The Germans were hovered over top of a mo monastery on top of this mountain. Uh, if you know anything about the Italian landscape, you've got mountains and then a valley. The valley that's adjacent to it today is the Autostrada. Um, the Americans and the uh, French tried to come up through the valley to go to Rome. It took them four months. They started in January. They did not defeat the Germans till May 18th. They walked into Rome June 2nd to applaud and cheers. And what we have to remember, th this is this is this is the the, the, the epitome of fighting for freedom, to, to get rid of tyranny, get rid of fascisms, to build a world order, which we enjoy today. Um, we're not there yet. And who knows when we will get there. But the reality is a lot of brave souls, 54,000 died in Monte Cassino just to be able to, to open up Rome to... Uh, to democracy. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's interesting you mentioned the, the, the numbers of casualties, uh, Kerry. Uh, yesterday was uh, June 6th, and I was listening to uh, the historian for the D Day Memorial. And, you know, he, you know, besides the numbers of the 175,000 troops that, that were engaged that day, what really struck me was he said how precarious the, the, the entire battlefield was. And that really, if it was really, uh, the, you know, if you boil it down, it was to the essence of maybe 3,000 troops and their leaders that individually took the initiative to fight through 
and and start to achieve their accomplishments, particularly on Omaha Beach, as 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 we all know, which was the bloodiest of the of the battles of the of the five beaches that were being that were being under attack that day. Uh, so individual achievements, and and what it reminds me, and as I you know, is that Americans, and I say this broadly, Americans have the spirit and the love of liberty, and they will rise to the occasion to meet those challenges on behalf of, of us all. Ronald Reagan, in his uh, beautiful speech 40 years ago at, uh, at Normandy, talked repeatedly about how they came as liberators, not as conquerors, and how important that was. Any final thoughts that you all may have? Well, I, I think I was thinking of that Reagan speech when we were, you know, talking, and it really was a reference. And, and I'm struck, obviously, then it was uh, 40 years out and, and so many people had died or were, you know, old. And, and this is this 80th anniversary. There are very, very few people who are left who uh, had that firsthand sure. knowledge. And we are privileged collectively to have been uh, lived among that generation and, and to have had that vicarious experience that... Uh, we were raised by that generation. We were raised by that generation. Yeah. Carrie, last, you know, last thoughts. Bottom line is our, our parents fought for liberty, for dignity, for self-determination for all people, for a world order. And we can't lose sight of that. With all of, of what's going on today, we've got to stay, stay true to the ideals that our four, that our fathers, not our four, our fathers, sacrificed themselves for. Well, and you guys, I, I, I know we're we all share this 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 the same sentiments here, that America is still the greatest place on Absolutely. earth to live.